So we have that integral from the previous page. Uh, and it turns out after setting q equals to zero, you have a PL over four cos theta sine theta times one over AE of the one member minus one over AE of the other member. And a real quick little reality check, if the A's and the E's are identical, then we would expect uh, no horizontal movement here and that horizontal movement would have to be zero and in fact that is what happens here so it makes perfect sense. Uh, sorry about the little typo there. Okay so now let's look at uh, that head exploding idea uh, 6.4-3. The derivative of u with respect to deformation gives us the load. That requires of course that you express u in terms of deformations. Okay. So everything has to be a function of deformation. Um, so it's not super complicated. You can just follow these steps. It's in the book too. Um, so if we had a series of PI loads and the work was uh, integral of PI D delta I, uh, and then we have the internal uh, work and as before, the same argument, I'm not going to go through all the potatoes uh, that we have. Um, the PI is a partial U, partial delta I. But there's only one trick here in that you really need to uh, get those, uh, what you thought of as forces before now must be displacements here. So uh, for an axial member, it's quite straightforward. Delta is FL over EA, the famous flea formula. So F is EA over L times delta. And uh, what I had before was um, replaced by the new expression here, EA over L times delta times D delta and the ith uh, strain energy when I uh, integrate it is EA over L um, delta squared over two and I'm uh, mixing up my deltas a little bit here uh, and you repeat that for the each of the axial items here. Okay so um, this can also be used for indeterminate problems and there's a nice uh, example in uh, 6.4-2. So I'm going to walk you through that. I think there's some super interesting insights here. Uh, let's just take a look at the problem here. We have a symmetric problem. The center cable is vertically aligned with the load. The second set of cables form a set of ang an angle alpha 2 to the vertical. And the third set of cables uh, form an alpha 3 to the center line. And the question is find the forces in the cables. Now without Castigliano this becomes kind of an ugly problem. And I'm not saying it's a cakewalk here but it's pretty sweet and, and I think very instructive. So let's walk through it. 